Although the law states for pedestrian crossings that you should be giving way to pedestrians once they step onto the crossing, common sense dictates that a pedestrian is unlikely to step onto the crossing if you're coming towards it. So if they are approaching the crossing and they are close to that crossing, i.e. they're nearly there and they're about to step onto it, then you should be preparing to stop. Keep your eyes open when you're navigating things like mini roundabouts and roundabouts because they very regularly have zebra crossings either side of them or traffic lighted crossings like your pelican crossing or your toucan crossing and you do need to lift your eyes up and look around rather than just looking at the junction itself. So a head look. Here's your pedestrian on the crossing. We need to make sure they are totally off the crossing before we proceed onto the crossing. So particularly if they are crossing from left to right, you do need to make sure that you don't proceed onto the crossing until the pedestrian has finished crossing the road. And the risk with the pedestrian is that they may turn around and come back over the crossing and it's still their priority at that point. I've only ever had that happen once with a pedestrian in my entire time of driving and riding, which is about 23 years now. However, on your test, if you proceed on to the zebra crossing whilst there is still a pedestrian on it, you will at least get a fault. And if they do turn around and come back again, you'll fail. The likelihood of that happening is very slim. And do remember, if there are pedestrians waiting to cross at a zebra crossing and you fail to stop, you will likely fail your test because it is their priority. If a pedestrian is approaching a crossing but they haven't quite reached the crossing and you don't stop on your test, then you are likely to pick up a fault depending on how close they are to the crossing. <laughs> There's a little bit of um, examiner discretion and common sense with this one. So if they are in the vicinity of and definitely looking like they're about to head towards the crossing, then it's sensible for you to start your slowing down process and give way to them if they're crossing. If they're dithering, and then it's not clear that they are definitely going to be crossing, however, and then you do stop and they don't cross, if you've held back the traffic behind, you could pick up a fault. So it's a bit of a mucky area, this one, because it rather depends on the situation at hand how it develops and how you react. Essentially, if a pedestrian is approaching a zebra crossing and you think they're likely to cross, I would be bringing the speed down such that you could either stop or go, depending on what the situation is as they get closer to that crossing. And that allows you a little bit of time to think about it and to plan. You will usually pick up a fault on crossings if you have either stopped and inconvenienced other road users when people aren't crossing, or you didn't stop when the pedestrians were relatively close and it looked like they were likely to cross and if they are definitely crossing and you don't stop you'll fail your test and if you proceed across the crossing before they have completed their crossing so they have not reached the other side of the road yet you will gain a fault or if they do happen to turn round at the exact second that you then proceed across the crossing you will fail your test because you're on the crossing when they should be on it alone with the traffic lighted crossings, <laughs> so to speak. So that's your pelican crossings, your toucan crossings. You need to be planning ahead for those types of crossings. Try and spot whether there's anybody waiting at the crossing. They may have pressed the button to change the lights for them to cross. And if that's the case, the lights are likely to change. Some lights change a lot quicker than others. And as you're not necessarily going to be aware of how quickly they're going to change, you need to be aware they may change relatively quickly. But as with any other traffic lights, you should be choosing your point of no return. So on the approach, notice if there are people waiting at the crossing. If there's no people, then the lights are unlikely to change, but then there might have been people who pressed the button and had already crossed. My favourite kind of pedestrian. <laughs> Not my favourite kind of pedestrian, they're the kind of pedestrians that really annoy me. <laughs> they press the button just out of habit and then they decide to cross when the road is clear. If you're going to do that, just cross when the road is clear, don't bother pressing the button. <laughs> so anyway, on the approach, notice if there's people waiting and whether the lights are likely to change. Always anticipate the lights may change anyway, because there may have been a pedestrian who's pressed the button but then crossed before the lights have changed. Choose your point of no return. Nicely done, Mr. Truck Driver. So if they're on green, you're going to keep going, even if they do change. So you're not hammering your brakes on when they do change. 
any time behind that point then obviously you will be stopping because it's still safe for you to do so without hammering your brakes on. As you're aware with some of the traffic light pedestrian crossings you have red and amber together to prepare you to go or you have the flashing amber phase. On the flashing amber phase if the pedestrians have crossed completely i.e they are off the crossing and there's no other pedestrians approaching you can proceed whilst the amber is flashing. If there are still pedestrians on that crossing and you proceed on the flashing amber you will get a fault for it because you're not supposed to proceed until the pedestrians are off the crossing and if the pedestrians turn around and come back again or other people decide to cross on the flashing amber at the moment you've decided to go then you will more than likely fail the test as opposed to just pick up a fault it depends on the situation how close they are to you etc etc as we approach this zebra crossing i'm scanning the road there's a gentleman walking towards the crossing but he's quite far away so i'm not even beginning to slow down i am checking my mirrors once again we're having a little scan around there's no pedestrians i'm going to indicate in case there's any pedestrians approaching the next crossing it's a gentleman in a green t-shirt by the time I've done this turn which is quite tight I suspect he might have reached the crossing so I'm bringing my speed down and he's not crossing and that's okay if that happens on your test there were no cars behind so we haven't inconvenienced anybody so you're likely not even to pick up a fault in that instance remember zebra crossings that have a central reservation are two separate crossings so here, for example, if somebody was crossing from the right and hadn't quite reached the middle, I'm still good to go. When they've reached the middle is the point at which you then need to be preparing to stop because they've reached the second crossing. You treat them as two independent crossings. <laughs> Mr. Cyclist saying to that Porsche, duh quite clearly it's a zebra crossing that's hilarious <laughs> oh people <laughs> well done if she wasn't in the middle you could have gone then this is now our crossing that one was not our crossing this one is so when it's separated by a central reservation it's two separate crossings <laughs> 